A fractal is a natural phenomenon or a mathematical set that exhibits a repeating pattern that displays at every scale. It is also known as expanding symmetry or evolving symmetry. If the replication is exactly the same at every scale, it is called a self-similar pattern. An example of this is the Menger sponge. Fractals can also be nearly the same at different levels. This latter pattern is illustrated in the magnifications of the Mandelbrot set. Fractals also include the idea of a detailed pattern that repeats itself. Fractals are different from other geometric figures because of the way in which they scale. Doubling the edge lengths of a polygon multiplies its area by 4, which is 2 raised to the power of 2. Likewise, if the radius of a sphere is doubled, its volume scales by 8, which is 2 to the power of 3. But if a fractal's one-dimensional lengths are all doubled, the spatial content of the fractal scales by a power that is not necessarily an integer. This power is called the fractal dimension of the fractal, and it usually exceeds the fractal's topological dimension. As mathematical equations, fractals are usually nowhere differentiable. An infinite fractal curve can be conceived of as winding through space differently from an ordinary line. Still being a one-dimensional line yet having a fractal dimension indicating it also resembles a surface. The mathematical roots of the idea of fractals have been traced throughout the years as a formal path of published works, starting in the 17th century with notions of recursion, then moving through increasingly rigorous mathematical treatment of the concept to the study of continuous but not differentiable functions in the 19th century, and on to the coining of the word fractal in the 20th century with a subsequent burgeoning of interest in fractals and computer-based modeling in the 20th century. The term fractal was first used by mathematician Benoit Mandelbrot in 1975. Mandelbrot based it on the Latin fractus meaning broken or fractured, and they used it to extend the concept of theoretical fractional dimensions to geometric patterns in nature. There is some disagreement amongst authorities about how the concept of a fractal should be formally defined. Mandelbrot himself summarized it as beautiful, damn hard, increasingly useful. That's fractals. The general consensus is that theoretical fractals are infinitely self-similar, iterated, and detailed mathematical constructs having fractal dimensions, of which many examples have been formulated and studied in great depth. Fractals are not limited to geometric patterns, but can also describe processes in time. Fractal patterns with various degrees of self-similarity have been rendered or studied in images, structures and sounds and found in nature, technology, art, and law. Introduction the word fractal often has different connotations for laypeople than for mathematicians, where the layperson is more likely to be familiar with fractal art than a mathematical conception. The mathematical concept is difficult to define formally even for mathematicians, but key features can be understood with little mathematical background. The feature of self-similarity, for instance, is easily understood by analogy to zooming in with a lens or other device that zooms in on digital images to uncover finer, previously invisible, new structure. If this is done on fractals, however, no new detail appears, nothing changes and the same pattern repeats over and over, or for some fractals, nearly the same pattern reappears over and over. Self-similarity itself is not necessarily counterintuitive. The difference for fractals is that the pattern reproduced must be detailed. The idea of being detailed relates to another feature that can be understood without mathematical background. Having a fractional or fractal dimension greater than its topological dimension, for instance, refers to how a fractal scales compared to how geometric shapes are usually perceived. A regular line, for instance, is conventionally understood to be one-dimensional, if such a curve is divided into pieces each one-third the length of the original. There are always three equal pieces. In contrast, consider the Koch snowflake. 
It is also one-dimensional for the same reason as the ordinary line, but it has, in addition, a fractal dimension greater than 1 because of how its detail can be measured. The fractal curve divided into parts one-third the length of the original line becomes four pieces rearranged to repeat the original detail, and this unusual relationship is the basis of its fractal dimension. This also leads to understanding a third feature, that fractals as mathematical equations are nowhere differentiable. In a concrete sense, this means fractals cannot be measured in traditional ways. To elaborate, in trying to find the length of a wavy non-fractal curve, one could find straight segments of some measuring tool small enough to lay end-to-end -end over the waves, where the pieces could get small enough to be considered to conform to the curve in the normal manner of measuring with a tape measure. But in measuring a wavy fractal curve such as the Koch snowflake, one would never find a small enough straight segment to conform to the curve, because the wavy pattern would always reappear, albeit at a smaller size, essentially pulling a little more of the tape measure into the total length measured each time one attempted to fit it tighter and tighter to the curve. History the history of fractals traces a path from chiefly theoretical studies to modern applications in computer graphics, with several notable people contributing canonical fractal forms along the way. According to Pickover, the mathematics behind fractals began to take shape in the 17th century when the mathematician and philosopher Gottfried Leibniz pondered recursive self-similarity. In his writings, Leibniz used the term fractional exponents, but lamented that geometry did not yet know of them. Indeed, according to various historical accounts, after that point few mathematicians tackled the issues and the work of those who did remained obscured largely because of resistance to such unfamiliar emerging concepts, which were sometimes referred to as mathematical monsters. Thus, it was not until two centuries had passed that in 1872 Carl Weierstrass presented the first definition of a function with a graph that would today be considered fractal having the non-intuitive property of being everywhere continuous but nowhere differentiable. Not long after that, in 1883, Georg Cantor, who attended lectures by Weierstrass, published examples of subsets of the real line known as Cantor sets, which had unusual properties and are now recognized as fractals. Also in the last part of that century, Felix Klein and Henry Poincaré introduced a category of fractal that has come to be called self-inverse fractals. One of the next milestones came in 1904 when Helga von Koch, extending ideas of Poincaré and dissatisfied with Weierstrass's abstract and analytic definition, gave a more geometric definition including hand-drawn images of a similar function, which is now called the Koch snowflake. Another milestone came a decade later in 1915, when Vatswiff Sierpinski constructed his famous triangle then, one year later, his carpet. By 1918, two French mathematicians, Pierre Fatou and Gaston Julia, though working independently, arrived essentially simultaneously at results describing what are now seen as fractal behavior associated with mapping complex numbers and iterative functions and leading to further ideas about attractors and repellers, which have become very important in the study of fractals. Very shortly after that work was submitted, by March 1918, Felix Hausdorff expanded the definition of dimension significantly for the evolution of the definition of fractals, to allow for sets to have non-integer dimensions. The idea of self-similar curves was taken further by Paul L. E. Acute V. Y., who, in his 1938 paper Plane or Space Curves and Surfaces Consisting of Parts Similar to the Whole described a new fractal curve, the L. E. Acute V. Y. C. curve. Different researchers have postulated that without the aid of modern computer graphics, early investigators were limited to what they could depict in manual drawings so lack the means to visualize the beauty and appreciate some of the implications of many of the patterns they had discovered.
statistical self-similarity and fractional dimension, which built on earlier work by Lewis Fry Richardson. In 1975 Mandelbrot solidified hundreds of years of thought and mathematical development in coining the word fractal, and illustrated his mathematical definition with striking computer-constructed visualizations. These images, such as of his canonical Mandelbrot set, captured the popular imagination, many of them were based on recursion, leading to the popular meaning of the term, fractal. Currently, fractal studies are essentially exclusively computer-based. Characteristics one often cited description that Mandelbrot published to describe geometric fractals is a rough or fragmented geometric shape that can be split into parts, each of which is a reduced size copy of the whole. This is generally helpful but limited. Authors disagree on the exact definition of fractal, but most usually elaborate on the basic ideas of self-similarity and an unusual relationship with the space a fractal is embedded in. One point agreed on is that fractal patterns are characterized by fractal dimensions, but whereas these numbers quantify complexity, they neither uniquely describe nor specify details of how to construct particular fractal patterns. In 1975 when Mandelbrot coined the word fractal, he did so to denote an object whose hausdorff basikovich dimension is greater than its topological dimension. It has been noted that this dimensional requirement is not met by fractal space-filling curves such as the Hilbert curve. According to Falconer, rather than being strictly defined, fractals should, in addition to being nowhere differentiable and able to have a fractal dimension, be generally characterized by a gestalt of the following features, self-similarity, which may be manifested as exact self-similarity, identical at all scales, e.g., Koch snowflake, quasi-self-similarity, approximates the same pattern at different scales, may contain small copies of the entire fractal in distorted and degenerate forms, e.g., the Mandelbrot set's satellites are approximations of the entire set, but not exact copies. Statistical self-similarity repeats a pattern stochastically so numerical or statistical measures are preserved across scales, e.g., randomly generated fractals, the well-known example of the coastline of Britain, for which one would not expect to find a segment scaled and repeated as neatly as the repeated unit that defines, for example, the Koch snowflake. Qualitative self-similarity, as in a time series. Multifractal scaling, characterized by more than one fractal dimension or scaling rule, fine or detailed structure at arbitrarily small scales. A consequence of this structure is fractals may have emergent properties, irregularity locally and globally that is not easily described in traditional Euclidean geometric language. For images of fractal patterns, this has been expressed by phrases such as smoothly piling up surfaces and swirls upon swirls. Simple and perhaps recursive definitions see common techniques for generating fractals. As a group, these criteria form guidelines for excluding certain cases, such as those that may be self-similar without having other typically fractal features. A straight line, for instance, is self-similar but not fractal because it lacks detail, is easily described in Euclidean language, has the same Hausdorff dimension as topological dimension, and is fully defined without a need for recursion. Brownian motion, a path generated by a one-dimensional Wiener process is a fractal curve of dimension 1.5, and Brownian motion is a finite version of this. Common techniques for generating fractals. Images of fractals can be created by fractal generating programs. Iterated function systems, use fixed geometric replacement rules, may be stochastic or deterministic, e.g., Koch snowflake Cantor set, Haffermann carpet, Sierpinski carpet, Sierpinski gasket, Pino curve, Harter Hayway dragon curve, T square, Menger sponge. Strange attractors, use iterations of a map or solutions of a system of initial value differential equations that exhibit chaos. 
L systems use string rewriting may resemble branching patterns, such as in plants, biological cells, blood vessels, pulmonary structure, etc., or turtle graphics patterns such as space filling curves and tilings. Escape time fractals use a formula or occurrence relation at each point in a space, usually quasi-self-similar, also known as orbit fractals, e.g. The Mandelbrot set, Julia set, Burning Ship fractal, Nova fractal and Lyapunov fractal. The 2D vector fields that are generated by one or two iterations of escape time formulae also give rise to a fractal form when points are passed through this field repeatedly. Random fractals use stochastic rules, e.g., Le acute Vy flight, percolation clusters, self-avoiding walks, fractal landscapes, trajectories of Brownian motion and the Brownian tree. Finite subdivision rules use a recursive topological algorithm for refining tilings and they are similar to the process of cell division. The iterative processes used in creating the Cantor set and the Sierpinski carpet are examples of finite subdivision rules, as is barycentric subdivision. Simulated fractals Fractal patterns have been modeled extensively, albeit within a range of scales rather than infinitely, owing to the practical limits of physical time and space. Models may simulate theoretical fractals or natural phenomena with fractal features. The outputs of the modeling process may be highly artistic renderings, outputs for investigation, or benchmarks for fractal analysis. Some specific applications of fractals to technology are listed elsewhere. Images and other outputs of modeling are normally referred to as being fractals, even if they do not have strictly fractal characteristics such as when it is possible to zoom into a region of the fractal image that does not exhibit any fractal properties. Also, these may include calculation or display artifacts which are not characteristics of true fractals. Modeled fractals may be sounds, digital images, electrochemical patterns, circadian rhythms, etc. Fractal patterns have been reconstructed in physical three-dimensional space and virtually, often called, in silico, modeling. Models of fractals are generally created using fractal generating software that implements techniques such as those outlined above. As one illustration, trees, ferns, cells of the nervous system, blood and lung vasculatia, and other branching patterns in nature can be modeled on a computer by using recursive algorithms and L-systems techniques. Not identical, but similar in nature. Similarly, random fractals have been used to describe, create many highly irregular real-world objects. The limitation of modeling fractals is that resemblance of a fractal model to a natural phenomenon does not prove that the phenomenon being modeled is formed by a process similar to the modeling algorithms. Natural phenomena with fractal features Approximate fractals found in nature display self-similarity over extended, but finite, scale ranges. The connection between fractals and leaves, for instance, is currently being used to determine how much carbon is contained in trees. Phenomena known to have fractal features include river networks, fault lines, mountain ranges, craters, lightning bolts, coastlines, mountain goat horns, trees, geometrical optics, animal coloration patterns, Romanesco broccoli, pineapple, heart rates, heart sounds, earthquakes, snowflakes, psychological subjective perception, crystals, blood vessels and pulmonary vessels, ocean waves, DNA, soil pores, rings of satin, proteins. In creative works, the paintings of American artist Jackson Pollock have a definite fractal dimension, while Pollock's paintings appear to be composed of chaotic dripping and splattering. Computer analysis demonstrates a degree of self-similarity at different scales in his work. Decalcomania, a technique used by artists such as Max Ernst, can produce fractal-like patterns. It involves pressing paint between two surfaces and pulling them apart. 
Cyberneticist Ron Eglash has suggested that fractal geometry and mathematics are prevalent in African art, games, divination, trade, and architecture. Circular houses appear in circles of circles, rectangular houses in rectangles of rectangles, and so on. Such scaling patterns can also be found in African textiles, sculpture, and even cornrow hairstyles. In a 1996 interview with Michael Silverblatt, David Foster Wallace admitted that the structure of the first draft of Infinite Jest he gave to his editor Michael Peach was inspired by fractals, specifically the Sierpinski Triangle but that the edited novel is more like a lopsided Sierpinski Gasket. Applications in Technology